Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Uh, this is from the uh, user's manual uh, showing the registers. It's a little bit complicated, but um, basically there are registers 0 through 12. That's the first column there, uh, first, uh, first row. Um, and um, in order to enable these registers, you write a command, uh, which is basically the address of the register. Um, and you always need to add 32. So if you want to uh, talk to or listen from the uh, units digit of seconds, you have to write a 32. If you want to get the tens column, it's a 33. Um, and then in the minutes, it's 34, 35. The hours, it's 36, 37. Yada, 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 all the way up through a year. Um, so that's what we were doing there. I just thought I'd show you this. And uh, what it returns is a 4-bit value. Um, and so um, it seems interesting that it's only a 4-bit four, four value, uh, yet we were getting 32 stuck in there for some reason. Um, so here's a hand-drawn uh, schematic for the board that was part of the user's manual. So let's, uh, let's zoom in and take a look at... Um, Take a look at what's going on here. Um, so there's uh, a four-bit value that comes out of the clock chip, which is, which is there in the upper right-hand uh, section of that drawing. So there's there's four bits: zero, d0, d1, d2, d3, and um, they are bidirectional. So when we input to that chip, it's up up off the page here, up on the top. But if we output um, that these these four bits go into a buffer, um, which is U10, and U10 then buffers these four bits and sends them out onto the S100 bus, um, and we still have four bits, uh, and those other four bits are handled by uh, those other two chips there, uh, part of D10 and U, uh, U U10 and U11, and you can see that those uh, lines are grounded. Um, so it's just outputting 0, 0, 0, 0 uh, for the upper four bits. So there's no way physically that we can read a 32 from that S100 bus unless there's something wrong. So uh, one of these buffers must be stuck high or not be working. So if, if it wasn't working, then uh, the bus kind of defaults to a high state, and this is pulling it low. So if it's not doing its job, it's not pulling it low, then it will just kind of default high. So um, I, I think the next step would be to look at those those buffers and make sure they are working okay. We might be able to swap out a chip. Luckily, all the chips are on sockets on this board. Uh, and uh, see if we can't fix that. Um, that number 32 that we had a stuck stick in the program it shouldn't be needed uh we should always read a value between 0 and 15 so uh, let's go look at the board and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it all right so there's u10 uh it's a uh 367 uh, tri-state buffer and here's U11, which is a 74th, same thing, 367. This is a normal TTL part, and this is an LS part. Um, what I sort of wanted to show you is, um, here's, a, here's a, just a generic uh, uh, LS04 chip. You can see how the um, legs of the IC, though, are nice and, and uh, metallic. And then if we come over here to this chip, you can see all this black grunge, uh, which is this corrosion that happens on these silver-plated parts. And uh, you can imagine that maybe that is not making contact any longer if it, that's inside of the socket. So I think the thing to do is... Uh, uh, this one looks a little better, not, not much better, but I think the thing to do is to... Um, Pull these chips out, try to clean the legs, um, try them that way. We can also just uh, reverse these two chips, uh, reverse their locations, and see if the problem moves from one place to another. But I bet you it's just kind of that grunge on those, uh, on those legs there.
Um, I'm going to try to clean those off. Maybe a pink pearl. Maybe uh, just uh, kind of scrape them with a uh, with a knife. But uh, try to get those clean. Uh, here's the chip. And you can see that it's uh, uh, it's pretty grimy. Uh, not good at all. Uh, so that's the U10 chip. Uh, let's take a look at the... Oh, I didn't dig it out yet. Uh, but... Uh, uh, I think the the uh, uh, cleaning is in order. Yeah, definitely cleaning is in order. You can see even on the the legs that go into the socket, uh, you can see that it's probably not making good contact any longer. So I guess is this is probably what will fix it. Uh, so here it is after some cleaning. Um, you can see it's nice and shiny now. So we'll. Uh, Put that back in, see what happens. I have the card back in the system. Uh, I cleaned those two chips. Uh, they were both pretty dirty. <laughs> and um, let's try our program. See if it fixed it or at least changed it. All right. Uh, I think I called it time. Run. Oh, now, you know, we have all negative numbers because uh, we're subtracting 32 when we don't need to any longer. Uh, so let's uh, get rid of our, uh, get rid of our 32. So we can use the program as it was originally written. And it now works. So, uh, that's a good lesson. Uh, when you see strange things like this, you know, um, a lot of times the old boards will all be socketed. And um, sometimes it's just, you know, like old equipment. Sometimes it's good to replace all the tantalum capacitors or aluminum capacitors. Sometimes it's go good to go through, reseed all the mechanical connectors. Um, you've seen that it's it, uh, the S100 cards, the edge connectors go bad, pink pearl eraser, and then uh, the, the ICs themselves. Yeah, pull them out, clean them, put them back in. If you can uh, reseat mechanical things, it's more often mechanical things go bad than electric, electrical things go bad. So um, uh, this is one of those cases. So looks like we have a card, uh, card working like it was supposed to. Okay. Uh, I spent a lot of time typing in a program. <laughs> so th in the instruction manual, they had a short program, then a longer program, longer program. So they ended up with the longest program that basically did everything. So I went ahead and typed it in. OK, so. Um, it basically allows you to do a uh, display time, reset time, adjust time, and end program. So you can set the time, you can read the time, you can get out. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff in here. OK, run. So uh, we can uh, reset the time. So it's going to ask the year, tens, units, the month, the day, oops, day of the week, it's Monday, hours, it's uh, zero, 03 minutes, it's uh, 47 seconds, I don't care, leap year, no. 12, 4, 12 hour format. It's PM. There we go. So I can display it. And it's set. And um, we can end the program. Um, go back to the system. OK, take the floppy out. I'm going to turn off the MSI. And we're going to wait for a bit. 
and if the clock uh, battery works, it should remember what time it is. So tick tock, tick tock. Um, I figure if, it, if it's going to work, it's going to work. It's not going to work. So while we're waiting, um, there is one cool thing on this card. It allows you to set times and um, you can wire, hardware wire things to the interrupt line. So like say every 10 minutes you can, you can uh, execute an interrupt. Um, not exactly sure how that's executed, but there's a bunch of jumpers on there. I think they're, um, I don't know how they work. I'll look at the schematic, but anyway, um, you can send a particular count uh, to a particular vectored interrupt. So you can give tick system ticks to the, uh, to the uh, system. That's pretty cool. All right, let's turn it back on. Let's go back in. Oops, I forgot to stick my diskette back in. Uh, uh, let's see here what happened. Uh, I am, my terminal window is not working. Well, that's odd. I am not talking to it. Why am I not talking to it? Uh, let's close that and open it back up again. Oh, there we go. I don't know why I got hung up. All right, so let's uh, go back to basic. Load clock. Run. Display time. And it remembered. Yay. <laughs> oh, well, I'll mark this one as good and we'll find another board.